God bless you, woman of God. Welcome to our channel. Today, we will be talking about financial liberty after the 2020 crisis. 10 steps to recover your finances. If this is your first time here, my name is Rosa. I hope this channel is a blessing to your life. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have a friend or a family member that doesn't speak English, but you want to share this content with them, we have a channel called La Mujer de Dios. Send them over there so that they can be blessed with the same content with which you are being blessed right here. The link will be in the description below. The year 2020, which many of us have called the year of the vision, has happened to be a very difficult year, which has called us to truly have an extraordinary ability to discern and perceive what we are seeing. There have been earthquakes, political turmoils, COVID, other sicknesses, hurricanes, you name it, we have had it in 2020. And the year isn't even over yet. But you and I have God on our side. And for those who believe in Christ, we know and we understand that everything that happens in our lives happens for a reason. We serve a God of power who changes the curse into a blessing, who multiplies and prospers us even in the time of scarcity and need. But this is not without us doing our part which is why I wanna share with you 10 steps to regain or recover our financial stability after the 2020 crisis. As we have read in Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30, the parable of the three servants who were given talents to use and multiply for God's glory. We are called to be good stewards of the blessings that have been given to us. We see in this parable that God gave one five, he gave another one two, and another one one. So depending on our abilities, he gives us knowing what we can do with what we are given. We just need to manage it well. Step number one, analyze your current financial status. We must ask ourselves a few questions, beginning with, what are my current responsibilities? What are my current month-to-month -month expenditures that I have to account for? Like my rent, my water, my phone bill, gas, groceries, medicine, taxes, tithes. Anything that we normally spend money on on a month-to-month -month basis, we need to account for. Also, what are my debts? car notes, car notes, personal loans, credit cards, any other debt that I have incurred that I need to account for and that I need to pay in a monthly basis. We must ask ourselves, how much do I owe to each one of those debts and what is the interest that I pay that company? And lastly, how much is my monthly income? What am I receiving on a month-to-month -month basis? What do I have to work with? on a month-to-month -month basis. Number two, with all that information, make a budget. A budget is a monthly plan where you write and you determine what are your monthly expenses versus your monthly income. And you plan where you will allocate all of your resources each month. Every penny, any dollar, anything that you have, you will allocate to all of your expenses and all of the things that you need to do. And there are several ways you can do this. You can do it with a budget planner. You can do it with a regular notepad. You can do it in a spreadsheet in Excel. You can do it on an app on your phone. There are many ways we can do a budget nowadays, but it is very important for us to sit down and do a budget every month and account for what is it that we are spending. Number three, eliminate unnecessary expenses from your life. I'm not gonna tell you that you cannot buy your Starbucks coffee. I'm not gonna tell you that you cannot buy anything at all and that you need to live miserably. But I am gonna tell you, you need to look at what you're spending and eliminate anything 
that you do not need. For example, in our home, we have eliminated cable TV for the past nine years. We have not paid a cable TV bill in our home. It used to be $140 nine years ago, almost 10 years ago by now. It used to be $140. $140 that we decided to spend elsewhere. And for the past 10 years, we have not had a cable bill. So there might be things in your life that you can live without, that you can sacrifice and eliminate from your bills. I am going to suggest cutting out those things that are not important and investing and putting all of our efforts into those things that truly matter to us. Number four, work with a cash envelope system. For those of you that are trying to get rid of debt and that possibly don't know how to handle your credit cards yet, I would suggest you do an envelope system where you keep only cash at hand. You can do it with physical envelopes, but you can also do it with bank accounts digitally. When you prepare your budget, set aside money for each important and necessary category in your life. You set it aside in envelopes, and when the month starts and you have to spend something in one of those categories, you will remove that money from that particular envelope. And if you don't use it, it rolls over to the next month. If you do this, if you separate money in categories, when the time comes that you want to purchase something, you will already have that money saved and available for you whenever you need it. If I particularly decide to spend all the money that I have in my gifts category to give a gift in a birthday, if I have another event throughout the month, and that envelope is empty. I can no longer gift anyone else. So that would make me be more wise and pay more attention to what I spend every month. Like I said, you can do it on a physical envelope or you can do a setting of multiple bank accounts for big projects that you have coming up. If this is something that interests you, leave me a comment below so that I can make a video just regarding all the envelope systems and the bank accounts that we have. Number five, minimize the use of credit cards and pay them in full every month. Yes, you heard that right. Pay in them full every month and do not borrow anything else when you borrow money you have to pay interest on that money borrowed which is why it's so important to save money so that we can purchase these things cash and we don't pay extra money in interest the word of god recommends that we do not borrow money proverbs 22 7 says the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender, which is why we need to be very careful and not go into further debt. Number six, adopt the seven baby step methods from Dave Ramsey. I recommend that you read his book, The Total Money Makeover, as it is an excellent guide teaching you how to be debt free, how to become completely financially independent with advice based on the word of God. I'm going to go over it real quickly just in case you haven't heard about it. The first step is save $500 to $1,000 for an emergency fund in case something happens, a tire blows up, something happens with your car, your refrigerator damages. In case of anything happens, you have a little emergency fund to fall back on and you do not need to enter into further debt. Number two, pay off all of your debt with the method of the snowball. The snowball is grabbing your smallest debt, paying it completely in full, and then using the money that you used to allocate to pay that one debt and add it to your second debt and pay that debt off. Then you will get the money from the first debt and the second debt and apply it to the third debt to pay it completely, and so on and so forth, giving you the opportunity to pay all of your debt completely. However, in such a time as the one that we are living in with the COVID, with many people are hesitant or are worried that they may lose their job, you can exchange step two with step three for a small period of time 
so that you can feel comfortable saving money in case something happens with your job. And step number three is saving three to six months of your general household expenses. So you will save the amount to cover your monthly expenses for three to six months. Let's say you pay $1,500 a month in your rent, water, electric, gas. You will need at least $4,500 saved to cover three months of your expenses. If you want to save six months, you will need $9,000 to cover all of your expenses. Step number four, save 15% of your income for 401k or retirement plans. We all know we most likely won't be able to work until the very last day of our lives, which is why we need to prepare for the times where we can no longer work. We need to save money aside that can help us cover for our expenses and that we do not become a burden to our children or society or anyone else. That we have a little money saved aside for our golden years for our retirement. Step number five, save money for your children's education. As we all know, education is very expensive. Many times we wanna send our children to college, but we don't have enough money to do so. Therefore, if you save money from the beginning, it will be easier for you to help your children go to school. Number six, pay off your mortgage, pay off your home. What a dream. Everybody dreams with the day of paying off their home. Why? Because the home, the mortgage, the rent is the heaviest or largest bill in our budget. It takes the largest chunk of money every month in our budget. So if we can pay off our home, we will have a good chunk of money left to invest in other areas. Which brings me to their step number seven, which is live the life that you have always dreamed of and give generously. If we can pay off all of our debt and we have money set aside, saved for emergencies and for the things that are important to us, then we will have money left to do those things that we have always wanted to do and to help others. Because many times, if we can be truly honest, we wanna help somebody, but we look at our financials, we look at the way we live, and we see that we cannot really do much because we are so strained with debt. So it is very important for us to look forward to fulfilling all these seven baby steps. Point number seven in my list, Look for alternatives to make some extra money. Find a side hustle, do something. Anything that you know how to do, you know how to bake, sell cakes. You can paint, you can do the yard, you can do anything to gain some extra money to help you pay off your debt quickly. Do what you know and what you can do to find an alternative way to make money. Number eight, find ways to save. We need to find ways to save money. Register with different companies that offer loyalty programs. These programs give you discounts and rewards that can help you save money in the long run, like airlines and hotels. We have stayed in hotels for free with these loyalty programs, and we've gotten a lot of discounts and a lot of free stuff with these programs. So register, register through your apps, or register through your email. You can find ways to save money. Look for things that others give away or throw away that you can restore. Most of the furniture in my office are items that somebody threw away or gifted me that I restored. I painted, I sanded it, I painted it, and they look fabulous. Like this armor right here, everybody loves it, and it was thrown away. My office looks beautiful for a fraction of the cost what it would cost somebody else. Why? Because I decided to be frugal and find ways to make my office look pretty without spending a pretty penny. You can also buy lightly used items or buy things in bulk and whenever possible when they are on sale in order for you to save. Number nine, do not copy anyone else. Learn to live happy with the life that you have, with the things that you have. Be thankful for what you have and stop wanting to copy everyone else around you. Don't pay attention about what so-and-so purchased or what so-and-so has or what my neighbor has. You need to learn to live within your means. 
When we try to copy others, we enter into a dangerous game of coveting, of jealousy and envy. And God is not pleased with that. When our purchases are no longer based in our needs and are just based on purchasing something because my neighbor has it, I am in big trouble. We are not all financially capable of living the same lives. And setting our sight, setting our eyes on the wrong thing can take us away from our priority and from our ultimate goal. Which brings me to point number 10. We must have a clear goal in sight. Where do we want to go? Each person should have a clear goal, a precise goal of where do they want to be or what they want to attain. In my particular case, I want to pay off all of my debt, including my home, in order to dedicate all my attention and effort into the missionary field. We are passionate about missions. We have a children's orphanage in Uganda, Africa. We also have missions in Dominican Republic. So if I pay off all of my debt, I will have more money available, more resources available for me to put into the missionary work that I do and the other countries where God wants to take us which is why I cannot neglect my priorities. I cannot come out here and say, oh, I'm gonna buy a brand new car, when the car that I have is in perfectly good conditions. And I have other priorities. I must pay what I have, what I owe, so that I can save. Many times we get carried away by the emotion of the moment, and we get so carried away that we forget our end goal. Next week, I'm coming up with a video on how I prepare my budget and how I set up my finances. If this video has been a blessing to your life, hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.